This is Grid Legends. We're here on Xbox Series X diving into this latest entry in the yeah, long-running racing franchise that bridges the gap of simulation racing with, well, more of an arcade style of motorsport. So be sure to like the video, subscribing is great as well. So here on the Xbox Series X we are getting two modes to play. We have a quality mode and we have a performance mode. So for the quality mode, we're getting what I believe is a native 4K resolution. I would imagine probably, you know, there's dynamic scaling involved to some degree, but it does actually seem to be very, very clear and stable in that regard, and that is at 60 FPS. Both modes do have HDR support, Dolby Atmos support, and spatial sound as well. So for the second mode, it was a little hard for me to capture, so we're going to have some off-screen kind of footage from my iPhone that's presenting this. So typically I use the Xbox DVR to record, you know, some of my gameplay, particularly the 120 FPS action, because, well, you know, it's hard to capture that otherwise, so that's why we had to use off-screen stuff, because I had to use an alternative way, and I do that just for you guys. So yeah, you'll see that footage and it'll be highlighted on the screen and kind of noted over. Not a whole lot of it because primarily we're looking at the quality mode, which is the default that most people will be doing. So keep in mind for the performance mode, it was a little bit harder to present it. And it's also very interesting how this game handles it. And I hope they kind of up update this and adjust it. So basically when you set your console to the 120 FPS, 120 Hertz like output, from the console on the dashboard, that's what your game is stuck as. You don't get an option to change it. So the only way that you can go down to the 4K60 mode is by, you know, turning off 120 hertz. It was really weird, and I don't know if maybe others have experienced something differently, but as I was trying to do it, I, I literally it was just blanked out and it was stuck at 120 hertz. I didn't have an option to change it. So just keep that in mind if you are going for the modes, that that is something that is present. So yeah, we've got the quality, 4K60, and then for performance, at 120 FPS, it seems like it's 1440p or a little bit less, somewhere around there. There is quite a drop in regards to the visual fidelity of the backdrop, the trees. You know, they look a little, a little bit cloudier, a little bit blurrier, but I mean, you are getting an insanely high frame rate, right? So it's kind of a... It, it, it's a good... Choice. I, I think it's a really good way to play the game. I mean, I, I do love the the quality mode, the balance of having this super sharp, full of detail environment, you know, particle effects, sort of like these streamer things going off, dynamic crowds moving around, buildings full of depth, lots of scenery. You know, it looks a lot better on the quality mode and still gives you that good frame rate. I just think, you know, you can kind of make a choice, which is really nice with this one. I do appreciate that they gave that option. There's also the rewind feature and numerous other difficulty selections and tuning choices to adjust the experience to be the kind of challenge you want it to be. I thought that would be something to mention as well. Now it does seem to quite, you know, for the most part flawlessly run at 60 FPS. I did notice though if you really crank up the, the rain, there might be some drops here or there. So keep that in mind, but for like day scenes and stuff like that, it seems to be running smoothly fine and without issues, which is quite nice. It does actually feel quite incredible to handle, and I love what they've presented here with this latest iteration of the series, but let's jump over to the next race. Like I was mentioning, the game is just dripping with visual details. The reflections are just incredible in terms of seeing the whole world kind of presented as you move around. It looks absolutely fantastic, and it's just a joy and a general pleasure to drive with it. It looks, seriously, just like spectacular for the most part, and you can see so much within that environment. You know, all of these crazy, like, little things going on, the destructed little bits of the vehicle flying off, you know, the scraps and everything like that. Then there's trees and people, and everything is just layered on for one wild time when it comes to just, like, a really surreal sort of visual aesthetic. I will also mention that, you know, things aren't necessarily perfect in some regards. There are little bits of pop-in 
that you might notice on some little things uh, such as like buildings, but it's very minimal. I don't think most people are going to notice it. I do notice that some trees seem to have like a secondary effect that they swap between, so keep that in mind. And I also notice that on a couple maps there seems to be some shadow sort of pop in on them, which is really weird. And it's only in very particular scenarios that that sort of thing is happening. It's also somewhat hard for me to judge performance type things here, and I, I, I just, like, I do feel that it is when you get to a vehicle, that sort of a thing, but it's also because there's such, like, I want to call them, like, post-processing type of effects, like, applied here, if that makes sense. It, it's just kind of, like, really crazy when you hit things, the sort of, like, blurring in that is, is just kind of absolutely nuts in this game. But I really did enjoy what this had to offer. I think this is a really great racing experience. It offers not only regular daytime, there's night-esque maps, there are, you know, raining options, there's snow, there are basically a ton of different combinations within different cities for racing, you know, there's like London spots got a bunch of different ones. So there's a great selection of maps a great selection of content. There's a good range of different vehicles from different disciplines. This is electric here, but you know, there's like circuit racing, and then there's like drift racing, and then there's different types of races you do, time trials, regular stuff. This game is really quite loaded with a wide range of different racing activities for you to take part in and for you to enjoy as you just blaze across all of these different scenarios. It really is quite something to take in. And you can have 22 racers, and you can play it by yourself, like locally, against the AI, or you can go online for like really swift and easy quick matches with up to 22 players competing with cross-platform multiplayer as well, if that is something that you'd like to do. You get all of these options to turn them on or off. There's a lot in the opening of this one that you have to choose between. But I was really impressed with just the selection of choices you have in regards to being like, hey, you want to have this feature, you want to have this feature. There's lots of different options for different vehicles that you pick up. You can play a variety of different modes. There's like team stuff. The primary campaign, as to say, is very cheesy in my opinion. It's It's got a good selection of like levels to it, but it's got like these you know, live action sort of film thing with like, I'm, I'm assuming actors or something where they're like a team coming together and I, I believe the first guy's like a prodigy prodigy or whatever and he's he's got the crew together and they're all doing the racing and they all bring something to the team and you're sort of doing these, you know, it's, again, like the best I could describe it is like really cheesy. If you watch the, the cinematics, you can kind of skip them and just do the races if you'd like. That's totally up to you and how you want to interact with it. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fine thing to have. Like, it's nice that they are, I, I guess you would say, ex wow, I did not go back far enough. It's nice that they're experimenting with different types of story delivery in racing games. I, I do appreciate that. I mean, there is a lot of competition out there in regards to racing offerings. So just, you know, keep that in mind when you are going to do this. You don't have to, you can just do quick races, you know, you can set up all kinds. But don't quick, don't click quick race if you don't want to do online, because that'll take you to online. You actually have to go to like, set up a race and then you can create whatever scenario, scenario you want. So they just give you a lot of different modes and different ways to play and I kind of appreciated that. It's really cool to have this sort of fun experience here. And I hope this is showing it off alright. Again, this was the rain map. It's got like such a strange sort of like vibe to it, this one in particular. But that's why I was also thought it was a good like kind of showcase map, just so you can see like maybe almost a worst case scenario almost, if that makes sense. Because it is really drenched and like things that are going on. It's a, it's a little crazy. But let's jump on to the next race. So here is a snow night scenario, just so you can see what this is like in action. Again, trying to show off different setups, different vehicles. There are, like I mentioned, a wide range of different types of cars that you can experience. And you can ride them in different ways and different perspectives, because I know this is something that's important for folks, so we will be showing off a couple different camera angles as we go through this. 
But yeah, the car models look really good. The environments are filled with depth. I have to say I'm, I'm generally quite impressed by what this offering has to provide. I think this can be quite fun. I like the grid series. And I think this is a pretty good offering within that franchise. I think you can have a really good time here whipping through car scenarios, whether you're doing so at the 4K or you're doing so at the you know, 120 FPS option. It's nice that you have different choices. And I think it's a, a really fine way to experience some next gen racing action. Yeah, that's actually quite cool. It's like just seeing the little bits of like the cars kind of scrape around and. It's, it's got like this really weird sort of like visual stylistic thing that's really quite cool. And if you want to get rid of the lines and everything like that, you obviously can. I mean, there's lots of different, you know, difficulty tuning stuff like I was mentioning earlier. Because I know some people will kind of complain about that aspect, so just keep that in mind. I just think they put together something that's pretty nice, it's well-rounded. It's an enjoyable game, it's not too intense in regards to the simulation, but you know, the simulation stuff is kind of there. And it also plays well into the arcadey side of things, which I enjoy when it comes to racing games. I, I like a little bit of seriousness, but I also like a little bit of fun. So that's where they're kind of going here, kind of capturing both of them, I, I think, pretty well. And you just get like these like really detailed worlds. I keep coming back to that, but I... Every time I go through these places and I just see the lights, the reflections, the shiny surfaces, the, you know, the different, like, particle things going on, it's really quite a treat to the eyes. It's almost like a bit of an overload when it comes to what we're seeing, and that's why I'm hoping I'm kind of getting things right when it comes to the performance on this experience, because it's like, there's so much, like, being processed as I go around driving. It really just looks so sleek and cool. It's it's just wild, actually. <laughs> they did a, a splendid job on the, the visual presentation here. It, it does actually feel like a next-gen game, which is great. You know, I've been waiting to see what the, the racing has to offer for next-gen, because racing games are typically a, a sort of, I guess you would say, uh, I don't know, groundbreaking and or really boundary pushing uh, setup because you get to see really what they can do in a more, uh, I wouldn't say static, but you know, a, a more set environment as opposed to other types of games. It, usually these ones and sports titles are the ones that really give us those initial visual upgrades that we kind of desire when we skip over to new generations of gaming. But yeah, like this just looks really great, and I, again, I, I think you'd be hard pressed in most scenarios to really notice any sort of like, you know, pop in elements, which is something I really look for in racing games because in the past, you know, that's something that's usually very, very prevalent in games. But I think we've done a very good job of streamlining that aspect of the experience, and also the loading is basically instant in almost all scenarios. Particularly when you move through the campaign, you basically just go from episode to episode to episode, you know, with little cinematic bits and stuff, but you don't really notice any sort of loading, you're just into the next area. When you do these setup races, it's usually like one or two seconds that you'll get like a bit of a loading screen, and then you're right into the action. I think the menus are pretty easy to go through, I like the online features that are present, I mean for people that like online play. I think that they do actually give you, you know, a range of different, well, basically ways to compete against others, because I do think that is something that folks do enjoy for these racing games. I'm not huge on it, I, I just like doing the local stuff, you know, that's more my thing for this stuff, but, you know, for those that do want that sort of challenge and that sort of thing, I, I think this one does a very good job of connecting it, you know, like literally right in the main menu, it's like quick race, and you're just in there competing against others, just going off against others, and I, I think that is well handled. I, I think that is a really good, you know, setup for this game. I, I think that is kind of the way to handle it and the way to do things. So yeah, just like a range of different options for competing and for enjoying what Grid Legends has to offer. I think it's fantastic. I, I think this is a very worthwhile experience. I think if you've been kind of looking for like a next-gen racing kick I, I think this one sort of hits that mark oh i should also mention there's like a bit of a nemesis system which is kind of cool you sort of bump along you anchor some folks they get pretty mad and then you gotta 
you know, they'll be more aggressive towards you. It's, it's kind of a cool little touch uh, on top of things. But I think at that point, I'll just kind of have some extra gameplay here just so that you can see it visually in action across a couple different more racing scenarios just so you get a, you know, further idea of what it has to offer. But I don't have more details to go over. I think I've covered it for the most part here and giving you a good showcase of what this provides. Again, liking the video is great, subscribing is great as well. And I'll see you out there on the roads.